Now, come and have a look at this. Early in the 1950s, a new craze swept through Hollywood. Films in three dimensions. Soon, they said, even TV would be made this way. Ah, but it never happened. Forty years on, you're still watching us on flat old 2D sets. Is 3D television ever going to happen? Well, the basic way to make three-dimensional images was discovered over 150 years ago. It's this, the Victorian stereoscope. And in theory, you should be able to see the 3D effect at home. What you have to do is pick up a magazine, hold it up right between your eyes, like that, then move towards the television screen, making sure you get it right in the middle, and look straight ahead, and you'll see a Victorian garden scene in 3D. It's actually two slightly different photographs of the same scene taken from about three inches apart. The left eye only sees the left picture and the right eye the right picture. Your brain combines them to produce a three-dimensional scene in your head. Well, it just about works, doesn't it? But it's not ideal, particularly if more than one person wants to watch TV. Which brings us to the old red and green specs. Why haven't they given us mass 3D viewing? They work the same way feeding each eye with a different view of the scene. One of them is uh, coloured red, and this one is coloured green, and the specs only let the left eye see the red picture and the right eye see the green. And things really do fly right out of the screen at you. But you'll get a headache after about a quarter of an hour, and it only really works well on black and white films. This system, though, works very well in colour. Now, the screen is flicking very fast between two different views. So fast you can see both. There are two views there of the rotor blades. And these glasses have rapidly flickering shutters. So you can see only one rotor with one eye. We just go in there with the right eye and move it across. And you can see just the other with the left eye. I hope you've seen that clearly. The effect is really good when you look through here. You're in fact seeing a bit of flickering on the screen, but that's our cameras. But to use all of this for television would mean junking all the equipment used today to transmit television pictures. And if you were going to do that, you might as well go for a system that doesn't involve wearing these. Which brings us to exhibit number three, a 3D picture without specs. It's really a high-class version of those postcards where the picture changes when you tilt them. Different views of the scene are cut into narrow strips and laid out next to each other. And that's what your TV would have on it. And then that's viewed through a sheet of thin prisms that's placed in front of the screen. And this is the sort of effect that you get. It looks pretty good. Now, a lot of serious money is going into developing this idea. But it only works if you're sitting almost directly in front of the TV. For all round spectacle-free 3D viewing, what about these holograms? A three-dimensional image conjured out of a flat sheet of photographic glass. Now, for television, you'd need a rapid sequence of changing holograms, which this system can't provide. But at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Boston, they've been working on a system that can. Coming away in a basement room may be the future of television. It's got a way to go yet, it'll only show cartoons, and it takes a supercomputer to generate them. But this is the first holographic TV. 16 new holograms a second to create a moving 3D image, and it really is very convincing. I can see a 3D flower pot gently spinning in space. Now, of course, you're watching this on a two-dimensional TV set, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. The hologram is built up in horizontal lines by bouncing a laser beam off two fast-moving mirrors. The first, in there, scans the laser beam up and down, and the second, spinning extremely quickly in there, scans it from side to side. But the heart of the system is a crystal of tellurium dioxide here. This is where the laser beam picks up the patterns for the hologram. 
Tellurium dioxide is an unusual substance because it can bend light according to the frequency of sound that you play into it. To produce the holograms, complex patterns of high frequency sound are played into that crystal. To get a moving holographic image means feeding 50,000 different patterns of sound into the crystal every second. And each one takes a lot of computer power to work out. The Model 2 connection machine is one of the most powerful supercomputers in the world. With 16,000 microprocessors working in parallel, the CM2 is capable of 1 billion calculations a second. It takes 6 billion calculations just to produce one second of a simple holographic cartoon. And it's still a long way from showing the complex images of the real world. So is holographic TV in the home really possible? Well, I think holographic television will appear in our homes somewhere in the future. It's not crazy to dream that some kind of liquid crystal screen could be made, for example, with, with the resolution that we need. I'm uh, an example of what I like to call a stereopath. You know, I have an obsessive relationship to 3D. I believe that it's an historical inevitability that all of that's going to happen. But even if it could be made to work, holographic TV would still be just a box showing images in the corner of your room. And a lot of 3D researchers want something else, something that makes you feel you're actually part of it, inside the action, something like virtual reality. So you've got a headset here, and I hope you can see that. There are two little TV screens showing each eye different views. Now, so far, this has been mainly used in interactive computer games, but television could be watched this way, and much lighter headsets are already being developed like this one. I think people might be willing to wear something like this to get into the world of virtual TV. Also, it might be possible to broadcast virtual TV with some of the equipment we're using to transmit the 2D pictures you're watching now. And that could be the deciding factor in the search for 3D TV.